Hello everybody, it's me, Danny Blueberry, and today I'm going to show you how I cook a cholent like they did in the old country in Hungary or in Eastern Europe. So come on along, I'll show you what you need. First of all, you need a crock pot. And this is a traditional crock pot. Um, it's a slow cooker, or however you want to call it. It pulls out of, um, of the metal cooker, so the food will go in here. Google crock pot but basically it's a clay pot. And I've prepared all the ingredients that I'm gonna put in here. Cholent, to my understanding, just means a mixture. So a lot of people just put everything they want in there and uh, it slow cooks it. It's hard to screw up, quite honestly. The reason Jews, uh, religious Jews, like to eat cholent is because um, in Orthodox Judaism, you're not allowed to start a fire or start an oven during the daytime of the Sabbath. So people would prepare all this on a Friday before the Sabbath came in, Friday afternoon, and then it would slow cook all through the night. And then in the morning, you'd have this beautiful cholent, which is similar to a stew. And so I'll show you what I've got prepared. I've got sliced potatoes. I've got little broken up pieces of corn, corn on the cob. I've got sweet potato cut into slices. I've got um, garlic cloves, a whole bunch of them. You want to take a look. I have onions sliced in halves. I have barbecue sauce prepared, pepper, garlic salt, sriracha, some Tabasco. I have vegetable oil, which is going to be the base of it. I have little up, cut up pieces of um, broccoli. This is uh, white radish. And here we have some chicken drumsticks. I've got four eggs, raw eggs. Four raw eggs. I've got some cut up pieces of cauliflower and I've got um, ground beef. This is still frozen, but um, if you put it in the crock pot, it's going to slowly unfreeze anyhow. It doesn't have to be frozen, but it doesn't make a difference because over 12 hours, everything is going to be nicely cooked. Then, the base of it, which makes cholent similar to um, a chili, I've got red kidney beans, black beans, where are the rest of my beans? I've got barley, and I've got lentils. And... Um, there you go, that's the good start of a cholent. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go pour the base of vegetable oil into the bottom of the crock pot. I'd say you gotta fill it at least a quarter of an inch deep, in just regular vegetable oil. And that's gonna be the base of the cooking. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the ground beef and I'm gonna put the ground beef into the crock pot. Mine is still frozen, like I told you, but it won't make a difference because it's a slow cooker. So nice good chunk of ground beef, because ground beef is gonna be giving it its overall flavor. Don't cook the styrofoam, styrofoam is not that tasty. So ground beef in there. Now we're gonna put a good amount of barbecue sauce into this. That's also very important because it gives it all a flavor, so I would say half the bottle of barbecue sauce in there. You could be very liberal because it cooks over a long period of time and you keep you can keep adjusting the taste if you taste it over the night. Um, so I did the barbecue sauce. I'm gonna add some sriracha. Also, just be liberal with it. It's, it's really hard to screw up a cholent. This will make it somewhat spicy. Not everyone likes it spicy, so of course you can adjust based on what you think your audience likes. Next, I'm going to add the beans. So I think the order is pretty important and it's just trial and error. And over the night, you could be mixing it all up. So I'm putting these red kidney beans in there. Here we go with the barley. What I always end up doing is I miscalculate how much of each ingredient is going to fit in this crock pot and I always end up with an overstock situation. 
but you know it's going to need the beans, and the beans make the cholent. These are the black beans. Here is the lentils. Nice, good smattering of lentils. Scattered around. Ta-da! So you're not, now you have the ground beef in the bottom, the beans all around it. Now we're going to start putting in some drumsticks. I have chicken drumsticks. Something about the drumsticks, when they're slow cooked, the bones just sort of dissolve in your mouth. So I'm going to put in four drumsticks. Ta-da! Then I'm going to put in some of these vegetables. We'll do the broccoli and the white radish. It gets very colorful. I'll put in the cauliflower. Da da! Cauliflower is in. I'm going to take a look at what we've got so far. We're slowly running out of space, but that's normal. Now I'm going to put in sweet potato. I'm going to start holding back on how my, and the garlic is going in. Sweet potato tastes delicious in here. My favorite of everything that goes into the cholent is the onions. So I'm going to stuff the onions around because when the onions melt or become soft, they're just delicious. You don't get onion breath from it. And so the onions are going in. Looks like I don't have too much room for the corn or the regular potatoes, but uh, I'll put some in. As you take a cholent, it's a very slow cooker, so you can actually eat the cholent, it goes down, you can add ingredients later, just keep it going. Um, so I'm going to put some corn here, and some of the potatoes, and finally, the raw eggs. You've got to be careful not to crack these eggs, because they're going to cook themselves, and they're going to become hard-boiled eggs, but they're going to absorb all the, all the liquid from the cholent, and when you, when you open them up, they're going to be brown and they're really delicious. So there you go. This is the beginning of a cholent. I'm gonna add a little bit more vegetable oil. Fill in the cracks and I'm gonna add some water. So, it's regular sink water. Pour it in, help it cook, let's put some of the ground pepper, so just go, it's really hard to overdo, so ground pepper, garlic sauce, not sorry, garlic salt, and um, we're ready to go, I'm going to put the temperature onto low. Crock pots usually only have two settings, high and low. But uh, I'm going to put it on low and um, it's going to start bubbling and smelling delicious in about eight hours. And I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. So it's best to have your crock pot on a metal tray underneath because sometimes it bubbles over and you don't want it all over your counters put this thing on very gently because you don't want to crack the eggs. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have the makings of what's going to be an amazing cholent. So thank you very much and uh, I'll come back to you in 12 hours and you can see what it looks like. Well hello everybody. It's now Saturday morning about 13 hours after I started my cholent. My regular photographer is fast asleep so I'm doing this by myself with a <laughs> selfie mode in my camera, but let's take a look at the chulant. It is bubbling. Everything is mushy and soupy. People like soupy chulant, some people like mushy chulant. Now it's still at the soupy stage. You can see the hard, these, these raw eggs are now hard boiled eggs. The onions are now softened. Sweet potato is soft. The corn is going to be um, edible right off the cob. 
but I'm going to leave it a couple more hours. If you dig up, you can see everything is getting mushy, but it's not as mushy as a mushy cholent can be. But meanwhile, I've been tasting it all night because I can't, I really can't wait to taste my cholents. And um, as I grew up ultra-Orthodox, every Saturday morning, the whole house would smell of cholent, which is this, this beautiful, rich smell that goes throughout the house. And I'm going to try some, like I've been doing all night, various stages. Just to make sure the flavoring is right. It does taste right. You can always add more salt. You can add more pepper. You can add more sriracha, more Tabasco, more barbecue sauce. Keep like um, refining it as you like it. But it's already delicious. Like I said, it's hard to screw up a cholent. Um, talk to you later. Maybe I'm going to show you a mushier picture. Um, for now, bye. Well, hello everybody. It's Saturday morning around 1145. It is now something like uh, 16 hours since I started my cholent. The photographer is still sleeping. Um, so my kids like to sleep in late on Saturday mornings. But um, the cholent is ready. If you take a look, there it's bubbling. I peeled one of the eggs and you can see it's brown. So it's uh, by osmosis sucked in a good part of the flavor of the cholent. So it's going to be delicious. And now it is time to serve it in bowls with a big ladle and everybody can enjoy it. This cholent, I'm going to keep it going for quite a while. I'm not going to turn it off because uh, until it really gets um, solid, there's no reason to. You can keep adding water to your cholent, you can keep adding flavor. But what I'll generally do is, we'll eat what we can, I'll put the crock pot, I'll lift it out of this heater, and I'll put the whole thing in the fridge, and then you can skip, scoop it up. There's enough food to last me till probably Thursday. And it's delicious, especially on a cold Montreal winter day, with lots of snow, nothing like a nice, beautiful hot cholent to keep us full and uh, satisfied. So thank you so much. If you have any questions on cholent making, you know where to reach me. Love you all. Good Shabbos. Hello, my name is Jerry. And I'm Danny Blueberry. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of my video. Thank you for your perseverance. Um, just like you to know that if you become a subscriber by hitting that subscribe button at the bottom right side of the screen, you can be eligible for the monthly draw to win a Danny Blueberry t-shirt. And my album, Isolation, which I'll be happy to sign and mail to you wherever you are in the world. So subscribe. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Obrigado. Well, hello, everybody. It's Saturday morning around 1145. It is now something like uh, 16 hours since I started my cholent. The photographer is still sleeping. Um, so my kids like to sleep in late on Saturday mornings. But um, the cholent is ready. If you take a look, there it's bubbling. I peeled one of the eggs and you can see it's brown. So it's uh, by osmosis sucked in good part of the flavor of the cholent. So it's gonna be delicious. And now it is time to serve it in bowls with a big ladle and everybody can enjoy it. This cholent I'm going to keep it going for quite a while. I'm not going to turn it off because uh, until it really gets um, solid, there's no reason to. You can keep adding water to your cholent. You can keep adding flavor. But what I'll generally do is we'll eat what we can. I'll put the crock pot, I'll lift it out of this heater, and I'll put the whole thing in the fridge, and then you can skip, scoop it up. There's enough food to last me till probably Thursday. And it's delicious, especially on a cold Montreal winter day. Lots of snow, nothing like a nice, beautiful hot cholent to keep us full and uh, satisfied. So thank you so much. If you have any questions on cholent making, you know where to reach me. Love you all. Good Shabbos.